Sergeant Jonathan Harper, veteran soldier, prisoner of war, dying hero. His story, seen in the Gears of War comics, is interesting and also very sad. As always, I'm your host Abs, and here is the story of Gear Soldier Jonathan Harper. Harper alongside Echo 9 were assigned to Timgad City. Meanwhile, the COG prepared for the light mass offensive, in which a light mass bomb would be launched into the outer hollow, using tunnel mapping data from the sonic resonator and strike at the heart of the local stronghold. The light mass bomb was placed on the Tyro pillar, as the train would fall into an emotion sinkhole from a collapsed bridge and deliver the bombs straight into the outer hollow. Harper and other members of Echo 9 witnessed the Tyro pillar depart, Despite the train being hijacked by General Ram, the COG was successful in boarding the train, killing General Ram, installing the tunnel data, and launching the light mass bomb into the outer hollow. The bomb collapsed Timgad Valley as Harper and the rest of Echo 9 cheered on. The bombing itself was an almost religious experience for Harper, likening it to an act of God. For a while, it had seemed like the COG had stopped the locust for good. For a while. Harper and his squad were stationed in Timgad for two months after the bombing, and he believed for a while that the Locust might have been permanently stopped. However, the Locust re-emerged stronger than ever, and Harper and his men fought off a resurging Locust presence in the area, as well as the city of Tolan being sunk by unknown means. During this time, Harper and the other gears stationed in Timgad, as well as the civilians living there, were exposed to heavy amounts of emulsion vapour due to the light mass bombing. After Timgad, Harper and his squad were stationed in Jacinto, patrolling the city perimeter. After being stationed there for three months, he and the other gears who were stationed in Timgad came down with a sickness. One of Harper's squad mates, Michael Barrick, revealed it was called rust lung, as he was infected with it as well. Harper and the other infected, suffered from vertigo, persistent cough, and insomnia. Tests were run on them at Jacinto Med, and Dr. Merriweather told Harper he was suffering these symptoms due to him being unable to accept the harsh reality of war. This angered Harper, and he knew this was false, that it was just an excuse and a cover-up, and wished that the doctors would just tell him what's going on. Harper and the other Gears were not given time to recover from their illness. One month after visiting Jacinto Med, Harper was deployed along with the rest of the COG army for Operation Hollow Storm. He felt that the mission was a last ditch attempt to win the war and likely suicidal. He was happy that the weather was good before the assault derricks began drilling, feeling that the surface was giving them a proper goodbye. Once he and his squad drilled down into the hollow in grind lifts, they linked up with several other squads and did not encounter enemy forces for a while. He had become dizzy from the ride down but was relieved that his rust lung symptoms were not acting up. Harper wrote in his journal about the experience and wished that the fighting would start because he was tired of waiting. He left his journal behind with his grind lift, but once they did encounter the locust, Harper and the other gears were quickly overwhelmed. Many of the gears were killed. Harper said, the lucky ones died, as the rest of them were taken as prisoners of war. In the words of Harper, they tortured us, demeaned us, tried to break our spirit, but they didn't break mine. Harper would have witnessed so many soldiers break, one by one. He found a piece of paper to write on, and he wrote a warning to others about the Locust's new tactics and encouraged them to try and escape. When the Locust tried to put him in one of their storage coffins, also known as the torture pods, Harper resisted and surprised his guard with a quick punch to his face, squeezing his neck until the drone died. He then ran for his life through the hollow, until he encountered Alpha 7 under the command of Corporal J Stratton. He took armour and a lancer from one of the squad's dead gears, and fought alongside them, determined to reach the surface and see the sun again. They fought their way to the surface, escaping the locust and a corpser, and returned to Jacinto City. Harper saw the sky again. He had survived the hollow. He had survived, in essence, a suicide mission. As the Locust attacked the city, Harper assisted in protecting and evacuating civilians. He covered an evacuation raven, holding off the Locust so that a little girl and her family could get on board. He killed all of the Locust, but was fatally wounded by them. He took those bullets, but he saved that family. No medics around, but that was okay. The sky was so bright, and he felt alright. As he lay dying, he kept hearing the little angel telling him thank you in her sweet little voice. The girl said she'd pray for him. 
She said she'd pray for them all. And that was the end. Rest in peace, Jonathan Harper. A very sad, but quite a bittersweet story, as he was going to die from Ruslong anyway, but the fact that he was able to escape the hollow and see the sky again and save that family gave him peace of mind before his inevitable death. Drop a like if you enjoyed this lore video, subscribe for more similar content like this, and I'll leave a link at the top right of the screen if you want to watch my other lore videos as well. I'm your host Abs, and as always, I will catch you guys next time.